After 30 years in service, the military has chosen a replacement for the official sidearm, the M9 Beretta. We're going with the Sig Sauer's P320, which comes in two variants, and all branches selected to produce the full-size M17 and the compact M18 as the new modular handgun system. Keyword here is modular, because that's why the military has chosen this expensive change that some might think is a lateral move, because we're going from a nine millimeter to another nine millimeter, essentially. So what's the added value here? The new modular pistol can be modified to fit the hands of various size soldiers, and it can be modified to fire the .357 SIG, which is a faster flying round at 1,350 feet per second full metal jacket. These rounds have some advantages and disadvantages compared to the regular nine millimeter. For instance, has the hydrostatic shock effect, which is a controversial theory that some ammunition with different muzzle velocities and different weights of the bullet can inflict a greater tissue or wounding damage. I've gotten a lot of comments recently letting me know that this is actually just a myth and I know a lot of you believe that the 5.56 has a wounding advantage but apparently there's a good argument uh, this isn't true so take that as you will. In any event, if this all sounds more confusing and less streamlined than how the military has been in the past, then you're absolutely right. It appears the new military is still in college and is completely open to experimenting. The reason for this change is the ability for the operator to be able to slap things onto the pistol more efficiently, like suppressors, special subsonic ammunition, and it's easier to add an optic to the new SIG weapon than it is to put on the M9, which you could only run with iron sights. If you really wanna shoot, use iron sights. No thanks, I'll use our technology while you're still shooting bow and arrow. Iron sights will still be there when your battery runs out or your optic gets destroyed, inevitably. Okay, boomer. No, I'm just kidding, I, I, my dad's a boomer, I love him. The new pistol has the ability to also run flashlights on the side and all that high speed cool guy stuff that you like to put on your M4. This is part of the reason why the Army has stuck with the M16 family, because they were able to make it so modular and adaptable. This will allow new upgrades without having to change entirely to a new pistol. This is why I think SIG won the bid, because they made the most modular weapon of all the ones that are in the competition. And if you look at the body armor, you got the Mali system, which completely revolutionized the way military equipment scene works, or the Picatinny rail system on the M16. The word modular is the biggest buzzword in the military right now. It's like saying synergy at a corporate job. People will scramble across the room or barracks to give you a high five if you use that buzzword. And there's no way around it. The M9 has a reputation in the military for being an absolute piece of garbage. It's seen as the 21 pilots of music, taking something that should be great and ruining it. When I qualified on the Breda, it malfunctioned a few times, and it's notorious for having a crappy manual safety that is prone to flicking off while it's in your holster. The whole frame of the Beretta is made of a metal alloy, which has disadvantages next to the new polymer frame, which is cheaper to manufacture for the SIG pistol. The SIG P320 is striker fired instead of hammer fired, which eliminates the hammer on the pistol. This is a technology that became prevalent only after the M9 Beretta was originally manufactured in the 80s. However, this does potentially make it less safe to operate outside of skilled hands because you're not able to decock the hammer. Every unit, including mine, treated the handgun training as a complete afterthought. And I can understand dropping the bayonet training, but shooting fundamentals for a pistol should be somewhere on the list of priorities for an infantry unit. You might be surprised to learn not everyone rates a pistol. They are given only to very specific roles in every unit. Medics, 240 gunners, and officers are the only ones that get the side piece. I had to wait years in the military before I got lucky and ended up getting training from a few local members of a SWAT team. They taught me some basics, which everyone knows, like the two dogs which where you put two thumbs on top of each other on the side like two dogs that are f***ing. Rule number one, in order to make a rule of thumb memorable, make it gosh darn mother filth and now I need to go to confession. SIG was awarded a contract worth $580 million over the next 10 years to produce the 420,000 new handguns. SIG Sauer officially said that the company is operating ahead of schedule and exceeding performance standards and requirements for the program. If you remember, SIG is the same company trying to win the next generation squad weapon bid. And I know I'm gonna get in the comments saying that they're never actually going to replace the M16, but I present the M9 being replaced as an exhibit that the M16 might be next. 
Back on topic, both versions of the Ang gun are based on SIG's P320 handgun, and they feature the Coyote Tan PVD coated stainless steel sides as well as a black manual safety levers. The 9mm pistol is equipped with front night sights and comes with 17 rounds and 21 round magazines, both of which are higher capacity than the M9 Beretta, which only had a 15 round magazine. Before we go any further, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, the 45 that was replaced by the M9 Beretta. I guess it didn't help that the M9 seemed to suck, not only in functionality, but also compared in stopping power. It didn't help that the 45 is beautiful, and when you picked it up, it had a great feel and even nicer bark. It was created by the legendary John Browning, father of many of the US military weapons. The 45 predictably started its service in the year 1911 and went till 1986 when it was replaced by the M9. Incredible that a weapon created in 1911, before World War I even, is still to this day considered to be the superior pistol. It's for this reason that Delta Force is said to frequently favor using the M1911. The M1911 is held in the halls of nostalgic past weapons that everyone sits around the campfire telling stories about. It's legendary among grunts who wish they could still carry it. Every once in a while you hear a private ask the following. The M9 doesn't have enough kick to it. Shouldn't I be allowed to bring my own pistol from home? I need the M1911, something with a little bit of oomph. No, you cannot do that, just stop. You must be worried about the cost of ammo. Don't worry, I will bring my own 45 rounds. No, you're not getting it. You can't bring your own personal 45, okay? I don't, they don't care that you have your own ammunition. You just can't bring your own weapon into the service, all right? Unless you're like an 18X ray, try hard. Then why did I even join if I can't bring my own pistol? Free college. There's a debate between the 45 versus the 9mm, which although it's been settled at the campfire levels, in reality there are some advantages to the Beretta. Having 15 rounds in the M9 versus 7 in the 1911 gives the operator additional chances to not continue missing their target as we know Joe tends to love to do. Since World War II, we now have NATO allies who we have to confer with on weapons compatibility, so we agreed on a 9mm round with them. There's a number of rumors about why we switched from the M1911 45 caliber. One of them, the most bizarre one, involves a political motivation involving Beretta getting the contract because of a backdoor handshake deal over renewing US bases in Italy. Another rumor suggests that the US was pushing for the 5.56 and 45 while the British wanted the 5.45 millimeter and the 9 millimeter, so they compromised. Decisions like this are notorious for involving politics and logistics, which isn't as sexy of a story as we're getting the best weapon. No, we need the weapon that will be best for the most amount of soldiers from the low speed to the moderate speeds because the high speeds are gonna get whatever weapon they want because they know how to wield it. Most lower skilled soldiers won't know what to do with that weapon. I'm not saying that I would know what to do with it. It's like the old saying, it's the operator, not the bullet. It's the gamer, not the Xbox 360. It's the cook, not the spaghetti. And I can say that because I'm a Long Island Italian who speaks no Italian and only leaves the country to go to Iraq. Not everyone is excited about the switch from the M9 to the new SIG pistol. There's some pragmatics and killjoys out there that want to bring up valid criticisms. What about how incompetent many supply sergeants are who won't maintain the weapons as well as they need to be? The M9, for all the hate it got, held up well to low levels of maintenance. And some foresee a problem with the compatibilities with holsters from each variant and different types of ammunition that it fires. There's also the issue of reliability. Just last year, a report made by the Pentagon, conducted by the Office of Director of Operations, Tests and Evaluations, found that the SIG new pistol has been found to discharge accidentally, fires upon being dropped, and ejects live ammunition. A lot of these problems have to do with the strike fire mechanisms. I give this all a pass though. Anytime a new weapon comes on the scene, it needs to be broken in. When I played baseball, when you got a new catcher's mitt, it didn't work right away. You had to slather it in cream and toss it in the oven you had to test the thing out, wear it out. Sure, maybe you were second string, but you got to tell people you were on the team and on Long Island that was a big deal. What was I saying? Right, give the pistol a chance to work out the kinks. Already SIG has issued fixes. When the M16 first came out, it was hated. Now people will swear on their lives it's the greatest rifle ever manufactured or miracled into existence. Don't get me wrong, I love it too. I'm just saying give the new guy a break. When the saw first came out, it weighed way more and was missing many of the features it has today. Let's wrap this up with the advantages of the new 320 SIG Sauer pistol because I've been giving it a beating. Think about how incredible it is to be able to switch between the size of the pistols within 10 minutes. Like with much of the new equipment in the military, including the body armor, you can scale up or down based on the mission. You can add daps or not. You can put on the, 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 all the plates on the side or just run with the plate carrier. Another advantage is the six hour pistol is lighter at 29 ounces, 
while the Beretta weighs 34 ounces. The military would seem really wants to be prepared for any kind of mission because they face such a wide range of missions in today's world. They've been able to go loud or exercise noise and light discipline, so to speak. The military's obsession with modularity has grown out of its practical successes, I think. I'll admit, being able to set up my body armor with pouches however I wanted was incredibly helpful. And the Army makes mistakes in procurement sometimes, but upon reflection, when you look at most of the equipment, they usually fix the problems they create. Please remember to subscribe and stay tuned next week for more videos from Task and Gear.